Taking the search for life to water worlds. Life within extraterrestrial oceans may not only be possible, it might be flourishing. Klaus Brasch, published, April 13, 2023. Humanity has long looked at the stars, and dreamed of what kind of life might exist elsewhere in the universe. In their book Extraterrestrials, A Field Guide for Earthlings, Camden House, 1994, popular astronomy author Terence Dickinson, and science illustrator Adolf Schaller present a series of alien scenarios in which life as we do, and don't know it might exist. Writing at the dawn of exoplanet discovery, the authors speculate on what life might look like on an Earth with lower or higher gravity, with a denser or more tenuous atmosphere, with glacial or jungled surfaces, or as a water world. When the book was written, the most probable solar system bodies that could potentially host alien life were thought to be Europa and Titan. In the intervening years, our exploration of our solar system with missions like Galileo, Cassini, and New Horizons have revealed that small, icy worlds are more geologically alive than we ever imagined, and subsurface oceans may be common. Ground and space-based telescopes have also discovered more than 5,000 exoplanetary bodies. Together, these findings have redefined the possibilities for life in our universe. It is not necessary to find another Earth, any planet that has icy moons could potentially have the right conditions for life to spring forth and flourish. Two main targets. Jupiter's moon Europa drew much attention with the first flyby images from Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 in the 1970s, and even more with the long-term orbiting Galileo mission, beginning in 1995. Europa is one of several worlds in our solar system, that host surface or subsurface oceans, along with Jovian moons Callisto and Ganymede, Saturnian moons Enceladus and Titan, and Pluto. Naturally, these bodies are of major interest not only as potential hosts for life, but also because they are accessible to exploration by space probes and landers. Experts agree that bodies of this nature typically consist of an icy outer shell, covering a water layer atop a silicate or metallic core. For larger satellites, like Ganymede, Internal pressures are so high that ice at depth may form a water sandwich, with an ocean, located between ice shells. But on smaller moons, like Europa, the smallest of Jupiter's Galilean moons, the ocean likely sits directly above, and in contact with the hot, rocky core, which could provide energy for life to develop. Europa's internal composition is likely a silicate mantle, and nickel-iron core surrounded by an icy crust, covering a 60-mile deep, 100 kilometers, ocean. Tidal friction, and flexing due to Jupiter's strong gravitational tug, most likely help keep the ocean liquid. Enceladus is also a strong candidate for a subsurface ocean. Though only some 310 miles 500 kilometers, in diameter, and about half the density of Europa, Enceladus is covered with fresh clean ice. First visited by the Voyager 1 and 2 missions in the 1980s, this moon's unusual nature was fully revealed by the Cassini-Huygens mission to Saturn, which orbited the system from 2004 to 2017. Enceladus is surprisingly free of impact craters, indicating that it continually renews its outer, near-homogeneous white layer of mostly water ice. Long, linear tectonic fractures contain geysers, that release water vapor and other gases, strong evidence that a large body of liquid water exists below the crust. If life has indeed gained a foothold on such worlds, what might it look like and how would it obtain its energy? 
in their book Imagined Life, Smithsonian Books, 2019, authors James Trevel and Michael Summers contemplate two types of ice worlds, which they name Iceheim and Nova Europa. The first only contains bubbles of liquid water, beneath the thick layer of ice, while the latter has a metallic core, and rocky mantle surrounded by a deep ocean with a relatively thin ice covering. Based on current thinking about planetary formation, such worlds may be quite common. Because the only comparable environments on Earth, lie deep in our oceans, scientists are studying them to learn what chemical, and biological signatures future space probes to Europa and Enceladus should look for. Terrestrial Analogues Earth's deepest fissure, the Mariana Trench, despite a total absence of sunlight, is teeming with complex life. Life is also abundant in our mid-ocean ridge system, which wraps around the globe, and forms the most extensive arrangement of mountains on the planet. As tectonic plates creep apart there, hydrothermal vents form, gushing warmth and supporting whole communities of organisms. These communities, were first directly observed in 1977 during the Galapagos Hydrothermal Expedition, by a team of scientists, from several US institutions using deep sea probes, and submersibles. This included the extraordinary crude submersible Alvin, commissioned in 1964 for the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and still operational today. In Okeanos magazine, marine geologist Robert Ballard, one of the expedition's scientists reports, when they reached their target coordinates, Alvin and its three-man crew entered another world. Coming out of small cracks, across the lava terrain was warm, shimmering water that rapidly turned cloudy blue as manganese, and other chemicals in solution precipitated out, and deposited brown stains on the surrounding surface. But even more interesting, was the presence of a dense biological community living in, and around the active vents Ballard writes. The vents, termed black smokers, result from seawater flowing into the fracture, becoming enriched in different elements, and then expelled as hot up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit, acidic fluids through chimney-like structures. Though it did not garner much public attention, at the time, this discovery has been likened in importance to landing on the moon. Subscribe to our channel for exciting content and stay connected with all the latest updates and adventures.